Hello and welcome to this video and in this video I'm going to show you how you can build procedural lego bricks so in here in Houdini this is an example of what you could do with this tool so you can generate multiple versions of lego bricks you are looking for so let's get started first of all let's make a geometry node then in this geometry node I'm going to make a box and this is then my basic shape for my lego brick so in this box the size are here important values so this will control how big my overall brick should be so let's set here this two and this two as well so right now i have a two by two lego brick and the main thing i want to add here now is here at the bottom i want to have this opening so we can stack the bricks on each other so i'm going to place down next root in this extrude, I'm going to select here a polygon. So click on this icon, select the bottom primitive and press enter. Then we're going to go here on this handle and I'm going to scroll up my mouse. As you can see, we have now an inset. Now further down here in this poly extrude, we want to save the front group as output. So this is my front group and I want to save this information to use in another extrude node. So place down an extrude node as well. And in this new extrude node at the top, we're going to use this extrude front group that we just exported. And now when we move the handle, we can now have this geometry over here. So this is already my base setup. And let's grab these three nodes and I'm going to press shift C to make a tool out of this. You can also use this icon over here. So once this is collapsed in the network, I'm going to right click. I'm going to say create digital asset and give this a proper name then just click accept and now this menu will pop up most of the time it will be set here on basics but let's go to the parameter menu and we're going to create some parameters so go in the network go to the box and we're going to drag and drop these values and now these are the parameters i can control outside the tool press apply and if i would now go back to my tool i have these two values over here that i can control now a few things i want to do is they need to be integer so i'm going to change them from float to integer and i'm going to set here a range so in here let's set the range to one and press apply and accept so they never should go lower than one and now I can generate my basic size for a Lego brick. Now from here, let's create the top parts for the Lego brick. So I'm going to place down a grid. And this grid is going to calculate where these points should be. So I'm going to set here my grid to points. So now it will spawn a lot of points. And I'm going to link the size of this grid to my parameter. So I'm going to go to my box, I'm going to click on size, and we can just copy paste this reference. So you can use this reference to the parameter here as well. And this needs to be changed from X to Z, of course. And now it's fitting to the box, as you can see. Now we can do this also here in row and columns. So I'm going to copy paste here, and this is actually reversed. So there must be Z here and then the X. And now this is linked to each other. Now let's grab a tube. And set this tube to a polygon. Close the gaps. And let's use a copy to points. So I want to copy the tube on my grid. Like this. And then now I want to scale this down to what could work like this. Now as you can see they are not placed nicely with each other so we can also merge these two results so select both nodes gonna hold alt drag and now they are merged to each other i'm gonna move up the grid so they are here at the top and there are a few changes i want to make here further is i want to put a minus one in here and now they are nicely placed where they should be so if i would quickly go back to my tool here you can see that they are now adjusting to my values. Now then the next part is then 
making these rings here at the bottom so they can stack nicely on each other so let's go back in the network and this is a very similar part to already this so i'm just going to copy paste that over here and merge that this together so i'm going to change down the tube a bit so here we have my tube and i don't want to cap i don't want to close the tube anymore so let's make an open one and i want to extrude this when extruding this now i have the ring shape and we can see that these polygons are not fully closed so let's go here in the menu and enable output back polygons as well so now i have this ring so for now as you can see there are too many of them so place down the rings here at the top so it's very visual what we're doing and instead of the minus one we're going to change this to two so they are here and over here in the row columns we also need to do minus ones so they are placed there and as you can see they are now nicely fitting here so if I would increase the size they are nicely fit there so they can be stacked on each other so of course we're not going to place them here we're going to move them so we can see them over here like this so they're nicely there so let's see how this works so let's play around with this value and I can notice here when this is value 1 or this is also 1 then we have a problem so right now these are not really nice done so what is happening in normal lego bricks is that these round tubes are getting smaller so I'm gonna adjust that as well I'm gonna grab a note here called the switch if so this is where we can give an if statement there are other ways we can do this as well but this one works really well so what we can do is we can write a certain expression in here and it's going to switch between output 1 and 2 so this shape will actually by be my second output and then my first output will be a smaller version that is closed like this so this is a smaller version this then is the normal version when we have bigger bricks so in here I'm going to then write an expression and I'm going to copy these sizes because I'm going to write my expression based on the on the size. If the x is bigger is bigger than 1 and we need another one if the same expression had happened but then in the z size. So let's plug that in over here. So now you can see we have these smaller parts and if I would go bigger they automatically switch now. So that's fixed. Now one more issue here is when they are both one, this should actually not be there. They should be empty so these can stack on each other. So I'm going to copy paste this if statement and I'm going to place it down here underneath the copy to points. Then I'm going to make some changes that if these are equal to one, so if all conditions are true, equal to one, then this should be my input otherwise let's use the null node so null node basically means nothing then i'm going to redirect the line over here and now we have a correct result test it out as well changing a value now we can clearly see that everything is working how they should be and this is how you can make a procedural lego brick so with a few basic steps we have created this procedural then with a few more tweaks like adding a bevel we can get a much smoother result and a nice lego brick so that was it for this video stay tuned for the next video which i will going to use these bricks in a simulation and make a tiling material so thank you for watching and special thanks to all of my patrons